So this tweet has been going around a lot and spurring a lot of controversy in the League of Legends community. The sample size. Yep. What? What? Who would use a 10 game sample size? What the fuck? That is yep. not a sample size. That is absolutely not. But then the other thing, th this was the thing that pissed me off about Renekton, right? This is the thing that really fucking triggered me about Renekton when people would always bring up Renekton globally, right? No one did weighted uh, weighted statistics against Renekton. Uh, and by weighted, I mean comparing like Renekton's win rate uh, on top teams versus bottom teams, bottom teams versus top teams, right? And then like a lot of other contexts. But the problem is that there is a lot to fucking untangle. It gets really convoluted. But then the other thing is standard deviations. No one talks about standard deviations. Huh. This is fucking insane. I actually don't know, and uh, th this isn't flaming anyone. I don't know how many people are, and it's not to say that you actually need a degree to do this, but like, I don't know how many stats majors are actually in LOL esports. So who am I? And why should you listen to me about what I have to say with stats? Well, I am a stats major. And I also care a lot about this League of Legends esports community. So I wanted to right some of the wrongs and, like LS said, create a weighted distribution of some of the champions and where their win rates are actually coming from and how much they actually matter. In this tweet, Freak says, Rumble is 3-7 and seven at MSI so far if you don't count RNG's completely free wins, regardless of comp. Champ is giga overrated in that role. He's a good mid laner. He's a bad jungler. Draft better. So is he right about this tweet? Tweet, And if he is right, surely there's more champions with stats like this also. I wanted to go through and analyze and fix some of the mistakes Freak made in this tweet and use some different metrics to show where the champs being picked at MSI truly stand. First things first, why is what Freak said so demonstrably bad? The main crime lies in the removal of wins by RNG. He's only taking away the wins from Rumble and none of the games where Rumble was picked against RNG. This very clearly skews the results to look more in his side of the argument by only removing wins and not losses. He should instead be looking to weight each win by how likely it was to happen in the first place, regardless of if Rumble was picked or not. And so that's what I went ahead and did. So to do this, we're going to have to first find the expected win rate of each team in the game. This can be easily calculated by a theorem known as the log five for formula. Um, so you can see it at the top here. It is the chance of team A winning is the percentage of win rate of team A times one minus the percentage of win rate of team B, all divided by A times one minus B plus B times one minus A. So as an example, we can show the win rates between uh, Dom1 and Cloud9 and see who's most likely to win in that game. In a game between them, sorry. So Dom1 won five out of their six games in the group Cloud9 won four out of their six groups. So from this, we can get the Dom one's win odds are 0.8333 times 1 minus 0.66 all over 0.833 times 1 minus 0.66 plus 0.66 times 1 minus 0.833. And this comes out to roughly a 71% win, win rate. For each champion, then, we can find every single game where they're played and find the odds of them winning that game and find if they're winning more games than they should be, or if they're losing more games than they should be. From that, we end up with this chart here. And basically, a couple things stand out immediately to me. First, Rumble. Obviously, that's who we're looking for. So Rumble, so far at MSI, has been, 8%, or has been losing 8% more games than we expect him to win. However, Rumble is nowhere near the worst uh, offender in this. Renekton is performing more than double as bad as Rumble is in this tournament, losing 18.6% more games than we expected. There's a ton of champs in here that are worse than Rumble. So to say that Rumble is so bad in the jungle, based on the win rates like Freak is using, we also have to say that these champs are bad. So what do these numbers actually tell us? Well, they tell us exactly what I said. Rumble has lost 9% more games than we expect, and Renekton has lost almost 20% more games than we expect. We cannot use these numbers and these numbers only to conclude that Rumble, Nocturne, and Renekton are all bad champs. We can use them to make a hypothesis that they might be overvalued currently, but we cannot conclude that they are necessarily bad champs because we don't know any of the circumstances around it. Similarly, 
while you might say that their numbers are bad because they're bad champs, you can also say that their numbers are bad because the teams are just not using them correctly. So we can have multiple different explanations pr proving the same results, but we d don't know based just off of these numbers which one is right. And that's the problem with just using win rates to decide who, what champs are good and what champs are bad. They don't tell the whole story. So let's compare these numbers now to the ban rates of each champ. So ban rates are often thought of to show how strong a champ is or like how annoying a champ is to play against because it's the champs that people are the most afraid to play against. So let's look at the top four most frequent bans in the drafts. Renekton, Morgana, Varus, and Rumble. Of these, only Morgana has even a remotely positive win rate versus their expected win rate. So now seeing these bans, what can we say? Are they banned because every team has no idea what they're doing and they're banning bad chum champs just for the fun of it? Or is it because these champs are actually good and these teams don't want to play against them? Here lies the central issues with what Freak is saying and what he's trying to do. He's using the numbers to force a conclusion instead of using the numbers to draw a hypothesis. Saying Rumble is bad instead of asking why is Rumble doing bad. It might be because Rumble's a bad champion, but it also might be from a bunch of other reasons like Rumble not being used po properly, or one of the many other possible hypotheses you can draw from these da this data. Now I've been using these win rates taken from games at MSI, but how strong really is this data? I mean, there's so few games, can we really trust what these numbers are showing and what their win rates are producing? To show how strong these win rates really are, I'm going to have to first talk about confidence intervals. A basic explanation of a confidence interval is that it gives us a range of values of which we are sure to a certain confidence level that the true value is contained within that range. Now, that might sound like a bunch of jargon, so let me explain using the example of win rates. We will need to take a range of values, a low number and a high number, of which we are 95% sure that the true win rate of that champ, if they played more games, will be contained in that uh, range. So this will show us the lowest and highest values which the true win rates could actually be if more games were played. So what does this graph look like? So this graph might look confusing right now, but it's pretty simple with a little explanation. These black bars on each one show the range of possible values. So for example, for Rumble, his true win rate could be all the way down at minus 40%, meaning he's losing 40% more games than we expect, but it could also be just as likely be at plus 20. And we don't know based on these numbers because we don't have enough data to analyze this. This is to show you that the MSI win rates cannot be used for any serious analysis. There simply has not been enough games to fully determine the true win rates of each champ. Only very few pieces of information can even be taken from these graphs to get anything useful out of it. At the end of the day, is Freak right in saying that Rumble is not a good champ? Well, he might be. We don't know. But he also might very well not be. That's just not something you can determine using only these win rates, and that's it. Thanks for your time, and watching this video.